I'm sharing with you simple methods to make great compost. It's a cheap system to assemble, three bays, and you'll see what we put in the heaps and how we treat them ongoing and how quickly you get some lovely result. I'm making compost in lots of different ways and my garden's quite large, it's an acre and a half now. And I've got bigger bays behind me where I make most of the compost. And then I started writing a book last April, about 18 months ago. Uh, it's coming out in this autumn, no dig. And there's quite a bit about making compost in there. And we decided to do this because it, it speaks to many people. So allotment size, medium garden size, rather than the large ones. And then if you're a smaller garden, you could have something like a Dalek. And the principles are very similar, how you assemble the ingredients. This one is a little bit specific, the details of how we treat each heap. And it's actually four bays in three. So for example, this bay here never receives any fresh material. We, we add to two outer heaps and turn them into the middle. We first of all make the heaps by getting some pallets. We actually knock the bottoms off. I find then that's easier to get, you've got easier access to the heap. They're lighter to handle. And the only way they're secured at the corners is two bits of wire for most of them. So eight bits of wire, four pallet frames, you've got your heap. There's nothing securing it to the ground in any way. There's no posts on the corners. They were placed in the beginning on some pretty tenacious weeds like bindweed, cooch grass, stingy nettles, and we didn't put any cardboard under the heap because the composting material is fantastic mulch. I did put cardboard around them just to tame the weeds a bit. We've still got some bindweed there, but not too much. So, you know, you haven't got to do elaborate site preparation. It's really good on soil. You don't need concrete underneath or anything. You'll, you'll read a lot of stuff about compost making, which in my view is, makes it unnecessarily complicated. It's actually really simple once you understand the process. And then you have a very good chance of achieving a result, something like this. So that is four and a half months old. It came out of the heap there, which was filled between March and April. We're doing roughly two months per heap. That's just what we do here. You might take three or four months to fill, fill a heap like that, and that's fine. Uh, you, you, all the timings and exact proportions of material, will, you've got to adjust according to what you have. Don't, don't make it too difficult for yourself. You know, there's no perfect list of ingredients. There's no perfect timings or anything like that. But I'll give you the principles. So that's a heap turned once. I find that turning a heap once, which turning just means moving, basically. We undo these two wires. You can swing open the front pallet and then you've got access, basically. That's like a doorway in. And with a manure fork, which is much easier to use than a digging fork. It's got longer prongs, they're curved. Just fork it out and shake out any lumps that lets in a bit more air. And if you come across any dry pockets, give them a bit of water. So you, <laughs> you've got a heat then that you can leave until you're ready to use it. This is August and that compost is ready to use for me, but I'm not gonna use it yet because we don't need it. So we're just, what we're gonna do next actually is put this heap on top. So the two outer bays both go into the middle. And you can get more of an idea here about the amount of wood we're putting in. It's quite a bit. Possibly that's even a bit too much, actually. But, you know, it's all relative. <laughs> the, when, when we spread this compost, it's, it's no dig, and it's just going to go on top. So any woody bits end up as a sort of a, a very thin woody mulch, which actually is fine. It works really well. You just, just don't want it too thick. We don't sieve this compost before using it. It just goes on like that. I think though, I'm pretty sure that we've got more wood on top here. It was just the finishing layer. If I just go down a bit, there, yeah, there we can see. Now I'm feeling the temperature there is slightly warm. There's a bit of undecomposed something. So like a brassica stalk probably. And the, all of this will then be turned into the middle bay and sit on top of what's there already. That is fine. We find that is absolutely fine because it won't be long before this one is also pretty much ready to use. So actually by October, November that we can empty this, put it on the beds and we've got, we'll have a good ton of lovely compost. And this that I showed you there is only two and a half months old. So that was made in 
March, April, May and June. I'm doing it in two months now, just go. Obviously we can control this a bit because we've got a lot of material and we'll put it in the other compost bays as well. But it just helps to clarify what you can do and, and how you make it. So this is the, now going to the assembling a heap. And I've got some buckets of materials um, to illustrate a few things. And you'll notice also that we have cardboard around the edge. And I know this contradicts what is commonly said that you should have slatted sides to a compost heap to let the air in. I find that's not true at all. Air, you actually don't want that. You know, imagine in the dry summer we've just had, if you had air flowing into your compost heap, it would just dry out. And you want moisture. So actually the cardboard keeps moisture in there and it keeps warmth in closer to the side as well. It's insulating as well. And it slowly decays and <clears throat> we'll then add it to the heap when it's <laughs> not serving this purpose anymore. So that's one possible ingredient. And then I put this here, I'll just mention this since it's here. Um, this is an optional extra. I'm thinking to do this next time we assemble the heap. If you have a part, a, a, any kind of um, object in the middle, a fence post would suffice actually. And then you remove it after filling the heap. You've got an air hole. This is an optional extra. You know, there are so many things you can do and I love the comments to these videos. Thank you very much for everything you contribute because that's what I notice with compost making. Pretty well everybody has a slightly different way of doing it and there are so many variations and I learn from them as well. And, and do read the comments actually because you know, a lot of people say that. There's a lot of really good stuff there. So, um, what do you actually put in and in what proportions? I'll mention layering first. It's, layering is not a sort of gospel thing you have to do, but it, because all these different ingredients have different qualities, some are dry and woody and some are fresh and leafy, uh, it's good if you're putting in a large amount of one or other of those categories. Say you're mowing your grass and you've got a lot of grass mowings. I would put a, a layer of maybe seven centimeters maybe, and then a thinner layer, maybe one or two centimeters of something twiggy, woody, paper, scrumpled a bit, cardboard, anything like that, dry leaves. So dry stuff, a bit brown, fibrous, that's, that's your brown, that's a smaller volume. And the green stuff is a bigger volume, but in terms of dry matter, this is where it can get confusing, in terms of dry matter, it's probably about half and half, but I'm going by what we see. So what we see is, is more volume of leafy stuff. So that's what your main ingredient. And then not everything is pure leaf. You know, here's a courgette leaf that I was cutting off the plant this morning. Um, this is not a vital thing to do, but it was more that it was in the way. So it got a bit of mildew on, old leaf basically. So this green leaf has some fresh green, but it also has a fibrous stem. And so there's a bit of brown in there as well. And this is why it's actually impossible pretty much impossible to quantify what you put in. And I can only give you guidelines and then you can have a play because this is a very creative thing to do. And that's one of my favorite comments where people express how much they love making compost. You know, it's, it's almost a, like an addictive thing uh, that you do for joy. You'll see here, there's a bit of grass that I removed from a pathway earlier on. That's fine to put in. Yeah, it might be better if it was broken up a bit, but that's got some soil. Soils are brown as well. So this is green I'm putting on here. It's also pleasingly damp. Although it's been a very dry summer, uh, that was gathered with some dew on. Whereas here we have some quite dry green. And I'll mention this just because I think a lot of people are afraid of putting stuff like this on their heaps. That's bindweed with roots. I was doing some removal of bindweed yesterday evening quite a lot. That is fine to put on, even if your heap's cold, actually. These heaps do get warm. I will mention heap in a minute in more detail, heat. Uh, so I'm just spreading that around a bit. And then here we've got some seedy stuff like, that looks like snapdragon, antirhinum gone seed, there's some marigolds gone seed, flower seed is uh, some facilia. Um, my main seedy stuff. If you want to put a lot of seeds on and not have them regrowing in your garden, that's where you need the temperature. You don't need the temperature. Interestingly, for things like bindweed root, I've got rid of that. It disappears over a winter, even when the heaps are not hot. Heat doesn't happen 
automatically heat ta happens when you put insufficient green material and more in the summer months just because you have green material <laughs> so that's when you'll find your heat don't worry if your heats don't get hot you know but you'll see this one we've got a thermometer in there it's reading uh, actually in a really good place it's between 55 and 70 is an ideal temperature because that will kill weed seeds and, but it's not too hot i think actually this is one reason these heaps make a slightly better compost in my experience compared to my slightly larger heaps which get a bit hotter and they're often at 65 70. <clears throat> you don't really want to go more than that and if you do uh, try adding a bit of water and a bit more brown a bit less green and here we have quite a lot of dead heading dahlias marigolds more marigold stems so i was pruning the back a bit something like that is half green half brown you know if you if you had a whole bin full of that whole bay that would probably make nice compost so it's a question of balancing these out as you go coffee grounds people ask a lot about that's great to compost i would much rather put coffee grounds in the compost than on the ground where they go full of fungus and they are a green they're slightly odd because they look brown but they're a green another green is fresh manure the fresh horse manure in particular and, and that gets hot as well uh, so that's a way of having hot compost in the winter if you've got a horse and size i don't want to mention this because it's a bit of a shame but the <coughs> we're so dry here i'm actually cutting out one or two sunflowers i planted in may because they're very greedy for moisture and i've still got plenty but this one i felt was one too many <coughs> so what i'm doing here is trimming it because i'm doing this just to make this point it would not work to put that on like that because that, especially if you put two or three of those on, that, that's creating a lattice effect of structure which will hold too much air. Much as we like air, you do not want too much air. And so cut your woody, fibrous pieces into small lengths. They don't have to be as small as that. In fact, if you have a shredder, I do have a shredder. Do check out some of my earlier videos on this. Um, I show you using a shredder and a lawnmower as well, actually. It's a really good mobile shredder for things like broad bean stalks. And you could do this as well. And in fact, any kind of breaking of the fiber is good like that, because that lets in. What we're doing here is helping it to bed down and letting in bacteria and fungi into the stem. And one last thing, actually, it's easier to show with that one. You, you can cut really woody stems more easily lengthways. Now, this has got so woody now, it's very difficult to cut across. But lengthways, that's opened it up very nicely. And then just make sure, I find always when I'm adding, I'm nearly always pushing things to the side because if you're not careful, you end up with a dome. So concentrate your additions always to the side. That way you'll keep a nice level there. And water <laughs> i've never said much about this before because this is the first time we've really had such a prolonged dry spell where watering a compost heap is worthwhile because if you're adding green leaves which are full of moisture then that's your water as simple as that particularly things like grass mowings when the grass is damp but now these green leaves that they're, they're actually feeling quite dry already <laughs> And they hadn't, they're not holding as much moisture as they normally do. So how do you know how much water to add? Well, it's a bit of a guess, actually, an educated guess. Um, but do what you could do is have a look a bit later on. Um, you know, put a fork in there and lift it up and see what's going on and have a look at the ingredients in the middle. That'll give you an idea. So a lot of compost making and being successful is about that. It's being, being involved with your, your heat, you know, becomes like a pet almost and he's looking after and then as you go forwards just keep an eye on what they're doing but just in simple outline this method two months to fill the first one two months to fill the third one then you turn the first one into there turn the second one into there and you've got within six months doing it like i've described as long as you have enough material to fill these in two months that's that's another if and then you can have lovely compost and i just remember one more thing actually that People often ask, how do you know when the heap is full or finished? And, well, <laughs> that's a moving goalpost situation because it, it's up to you. you know, but if you stopped at this point, if I stopped at this point, this is going to sink quite a bit and you'll end up with actually not very much. You, 
I aim to keep going. I, in our two months, we can get to the top. Um, it quite quickly goes down, but we, we're near the top for quite a while. And then it's sinking and sinking, and then we fill it again and sinking, and then it's pretty much near the top. And then you can see the level of that one over there. It's about three quarters full now. And by the time it's gone through its final stage of composting, it'll be about half what it was at the beginning. So have fun making compost and using these principles. It really is a joy.